happened there? All right. Hello, everybody. I'm The Last Pretender, and today we're going to be starting part one of my unit series. Here, we're going to be taking a look at what makes the units of Dominion 5 tick. When you first start the game, it can be very intimidating to look at this unit card. Look at this. It's like a million numbers, and words, and it's very hard to figure out what the hell is going on. Even more experienced players rarely know the ins and outs of how a unit functions. I mean, let's be honest. It's a little much to take in all at once. So, we're going to be going through the units in this series, and we're going to start by making things simple. There we go. Attack and defense skill. See? Far less spooky. Let's get started. So what is the function of attack skill and defense skill? Well, to put it simply, the higher a unit's attack skill, the more likely they are to hit things. The higher a unit's defense skill, the more likely the unit is to avoid being hit. Basically, it's your unit's skill as a melee fighter. Now, the game goes on to tell you that your average soldier will have about 10 in both sets. But let's take a look and see how it's applied during an attack. Let's say we have Jim and Thomas here, and Jim tries to attack Thomas. How exactly is the outcome decided? Well, both Jim and Tommy make a DRN roll. You can see my previous video for more information on that. And then each adds their respective skill. Jim, being the attacker, adds his attack skill, and Thomas, being the defender, adds his defense skill. Being that in this instance, Jim's attack score is lower than Thomas's defense score, the attack does not land, and the two continue to fight. And that's the general idea as to how attack and defense skill works. However, there are several other things that can modify them. Obviously, there's, you know, blesses and magic items and stuff that can buff your attack and defense skill. However, I'm not going to focus on those. I'm going to focus on on the battlefield effects that come from combat that are not magic related, because these are going to show up in every game. There's two of them in particular. The first one I'm going to talk about is fatigue. Fatigue is basically your unit's exhaustion, right? It tends to build up whenever they do stuff, and it has a lot of effects. Fatigue is actually a pretty big topic, and it's something that deserves its own video. But for the sake of this particular video, focusing on attack skill and defense skill, I'm going to cut to the quick. Whenever a unit casts certain spells or makes an attack, particularly if they're wearing heavy armor, your unit's going to gain fatigue. For every 10 points of fatigue the unit gains, their defense skill goes down by 1. And for every 20 points of fatigue that a unit gains, their attack skill goes down by 1. Now, as big of a deal as fatigue is, it really tends to only show up a lot in situations where there are certain spells being slung that increase fatigue, or if you've got certain thugs or, or super combatants who are wearing heavy armor. The bigger and more important one I want to talk about is harassment. Harassment is a huge penalty. Basically, every single time a unit gets attacked, they get a point of harassment. And for every point of harassment, their defense skill goes down by one. This is a sort of mechanic that's designed to help whenever we're talking about one unit getting totally surrounded is a major focus, right? You know, the, the more attacks from different angles that a unit is suffering, obviously it makes sense that they're going to have a harder time defending themselves. And so it becomes tougher and tougher, and so they constantly get these points of harassment that lower their defense skill. This definitely adds value to quantity over quality whenever it comes to troops. It's something that kind of gives the little guys a little bit more of a chance whenever they're just going horde and surrounding enemy units. It also is really helpful whenever you think about units that are dual wielding. If you've got a unit that's got two weapons, then they're going to be getting two points of harassment, whether or not they hit whoever they attack. And this is huge. And so it's something definitely to keep in mind because you can end up grinding down a unit's defense skill. I've seen them go down to zero before because they're just getting wailed on from all sides and it just becomes easy as cake for them to start whacking them. Now, the big thing I want to say about harassment that's kind of unfortunate is that your harassment, obviously you lose the harassment points whenever you're not being attacked, right? You're, not, you're no longer being harassed, and so all those points go away and your defense skill goes back up. Unfortunately, the manual is not super clear as to when this happens. It just says that it kind of does, and it's percentage-based. So the more harassment your unit has, the faster they're going to recover from it. But, at the end of the day, harassment's a huge deal, especially if you're going to be going up against or if you're going to be using horde tactics. And that's basically it. 
Um, that's all I really want to cover for today as far as attack skill, defense skill, and what affects it. But the last thing I want to talk about is going to be how valuable is a point? So we've gone over how exactly outcomes are decided, but if you say have a unit that has an attack of 11, trying to hit a unit that has an attack of 10, what are the odds of it hitting? How helpful is that one point? Well, fortunately, for all of its flaws, the DOM5 manual has a great table for this. Boom. Look at that. Simple. It's got all the information you need right there. You can see here, for every single point of differential up to 14, we can see what the odds are of you succeeding in a roll-off, right? Basically, it doesn't count ties, it's just whether or not you can surpass the other roll and have a higher number. And so, using this we can see how valuable a skill point is, depending on exactly where we are on this table, right? So obviously, if your units are fighting other units that they have, say, 10 points of better attack skill versus the enemy's defense skill, adding another point isn't going to give you a whole lot. Whereas if it's a really close contest, adding a point is going to give you up to, what are we looking at here, 8%. Um, and that is huge if you consider the fact that you've got hundreds of units wailing on each other at the same time. 8% is a big game changer. And so it's definitely something to keep in mind. And if nothing else, find this table, screenshot it, do whatever you got to do. But keep this in mind. And so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're playing by email or even blitz games, Pull this up and you can take a quick look and figure out where your time is best allocated and what your actual odds are. And that's it. I know we covered a lot of information and in a pretty short period of time, but I feel like with this knowledge you've got a much better understanding of exactly how attack skill and defense skill works and you can go forth and do just a little bit better. Anyway, this has been The Last Pretender. I had a good time and I'll see you guys next time.